Hello listeners, it's Mark here, here to introduce you to our latest episode of SLP Shorts, our first one for a while, but this one's a very special one for you all to listen to. It's brought to you by our friend of the show and co-spouse to the show, um, Anna Kale, and she's talking to Joanna Lester about her wonderful film, Power Mary. So uh, I'll let those guys take it away. Yeah, thank you for agreeing to um, speak to me today for Super League Pod. Can you just take me through a bit of background about the project and kind of how it came about, just to kind of start off? Yeah, so um, I, I'm from England originally, I'm from London, but spent a lot of time in Leeds where I have family connections. Um, and I used to work as a sports journalist here, and 10 years ago I moved to Australia and um, first went to Papua New Guinea in 2009, covered a Pacific tournament there, and was... Anyone who's involved in rugby league knows that Papua New Guinea is the only country in the world where rugby league is a national sport. And I was really interested in how how we could leverage that as a sport and how PNG as a country could leverage that for having a positive impact in society. And when I went in 2009, it was, it was very clear that that was possible. And a few years later, um, the NRL started running a community program in Papua New Guinea, a rugby league themed program. Um, rather than developing players or anything like that, it used the popularity of the sport in schools and communities to deliver messages um, to have a social impact. And I moved to Papua New Guinea in 2014 to work on that program as a media and communications advisor. I had a lot of female colleagues, all of whom were rugby league players, some of whom ended up in the Orchids team, uh, who you'll meet when you watch the film. And hearing their stories as female players of the country's male-dominated national sport in a country where women have very few opportunities, a lot of challenges, and there's a lot of violence against women. I thought the story of women playing rugby league was one that it would be fantastic to tell on a broader scale. Yeah. And what's the reaction been like to the film? So what's the reaction been, um, you know, kind of, you've, you've taken it to various countries, but also in Papua New Guinea as well. What's the reaction been from the community there? Well, it's a little bit different everywhere. Starting with Papua New Guinea, the, the main purpose of making the film for me was so that after the Women's World Cup finished, after everyone had watched the Orchids play on TV, seen things in the media, but it all died down, there'd be something going forward that could be used to tell the story of the Orchids, share it with more people, and almost be used as a discussion tool about the status and treatment of women in PNG and and prompt those discussions through a rugby league story. So... The, the partners that we work with in Papua New Guinea, which is mainly the, the NRL's team of Papua New Guinea staff there and some other um, charity and community organisations, have been screening the film all over the country in, in different kind of settings, sometimes just putting a TV in the street and people gather around, sometimes projecting it on the side of a building, sometimes as part of a conference or an event or in a school. Um, and we ask them to give us feedback on, on how people react and the kind of discussions that happen and that's been really encouraging and positive in terms of particularly the feedback from, from men and boys who've seen the film, what they've said about how it's made them think a bit differently about what women's roles are and and the strength of women. And, and, and that's really, I guess, not just my motivation for doing this, but, but many of the players, especially the ones that we meet in the film, have always been very focused on the, the sort of bigger picture goal of, of what they're doing. Do you think the, the themes, obviously, you know, um, are key in, in, in Papua New Guinea, but do you think they're universal themes, actually, about how women's sports and, and women's participation in sports is viewed? Definitely, yes. And I suppose a lot of the reaction in Australia and, and England over the past few weeks um, has, has been related to that. It, we've got organisations, universities, schools talking to us about using the film as an educational tool to either promote women's sport or female, female participation in, in sport, rugby league in particular, um, and just generally yeah, as a discussion tool about, about the role of women and, and um, opportunities for women that weren't necessarily always there. Yeah, yeah. And also that, that participation in sport is, is a key thing in terms of um, empowerment of women, of, of young girls particularly, who might not see a role for them, see, see themselves there kind of participating in sport. I think it's, it's really key, isn't it, to kind of um, show those positive messages about what, what sport can do and what it can lead to and how it can, um, I guess, build confidence and, and build kind of, you know, that kind of feeling of um, inclusion as well. Exactly. I mean, even though there are some pioneers of women's rugby league in this country too who've been playing for a long time, when I was growing up watching rugby league, um, I never heard or read anything about women playing the sport. 
it, it was not really, I don't think, on the radar that mm. it was a, it was a sport for women and girls as well as men, and that's only really very re- relatively recently changed. Mm. Um, and that's so that's certainly the case here. It's also really the case in in Australia as well, I think, and in in Papua New Guinea as well. The the opportunity for the PNG women's national team to be in the World Cup has sort of elevated everything. Mm. Things seem to progress very fast in women's sports. So we've gone probably in all three of those countries, especially with women's rugby league, from really quite a small base to to a rapidly growing base in in you know a couple of years. That's amazing to kind of see that progression. Um, but obviously, I, I assume. You know, there's a long way to go in terms of uh, matching. You know, obviously the men's um, sport, um, but it's good to see that that change happening. Yes, and I think um, you know there was some discussion about how how much women's rugby league should should be like men's. Um, I was on a, a podcast with a couple of women's super league players recently, um, and they they talked a lot about some of the the differences, but also um, potentially some of the better things about the women's game. And also in Australia, it's it's promoted as same game our way, which acknowledges mm-hmm. that it's in some ways a slightly different spectacle. Some aspects of it are better to watch, some are different. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, I just think it's an incredibly exciting time for the women's game and um, the growth of the Women's Super League, um, the expansion of the Women's World mm-hmm. Cup. Next time it's here in England to eight teams. Um, yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. Fantastic. Obviously, um, you know, I, I cover film. Um, you know, I'm, I'm married to someone who is really into their rugby league. Um, you know, the, 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 the combination of sport and film is, is you know, traditionally the, there's a lot of examples of sport on film. What there aren't examples of are women's sport on film. Um, and I was thinking about that as I was preparing to, to do this interview about the, the lack of um, representation of women's sport, you know, on in film and, and, and in that kind of the way that the, it's just not part of the, the landscape how hard has it been to get this film out there get it made in the first place and then out there and distributed and and, you know yeah if you could take me through that journey I think it'd be really interesting that's a really good question because um for the first year that I was as an individual trying to get funding to start making this film um I was really getting no positive responses that was sort of the the calendar year of 2016 and by the end of that year the beginning of 2017 suddenly everyone was a lot more interested. Um, Most of the funding sources I was approaching were based in Australia and women's sport has really taken off there kind of in that time frame almost. So it was really a year of knockbacks and then suddenly a lot of enthusiasm. So in terms of of the funding, that that was really, the timing was really key for that. And obviously that meant just in time to make the film before the World (laughs) Cup. So in terms of of the distribution, um, I think it's a a really interesting question because um, everyone who's seen the film absolutely loves it mm. the, re- the response um, verbally on social media has been incredible um, but it's been really difficult to find distributors get into film festivals that sort of thing mm. and I, I think it, it is be- in fact possibly because the film is about sport in any way mm. um, that does seem to turn off people in the industry perhaps decision makers in the industry um, and it's a film about even though it's a film about women's sport and it's almost not that much a film about sport yeah perhaps people struggle to see past that and perhaps because most or many films about men's sport don't have quite such a bigger picture focus whereas this does I think it's an interesting point you make that there are so few about women's sport that's the difference with this one um, and I do wonder if that's why we've had some sort of resistance sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting, I, you know, speaking personally, this is the kind of thing that I want to see, you know, it's the kind of thing that I, you know, want to go and, and see at the cinema. I want people to kind of talk about, you know, the, this, uh, the messages, the, the the kind of the journey of the people in the film. It, it's it's something that should be celebrated and should, should be talked about and, and part of the conversation. It's, it's interesting to hear that people are, you know, not kind of taking that and kind of seeing that as a, as a positive way to kind of you know get the film out there what what's the journey for the film next are you able to um kind of get it into to cinemas for people to see what well, what's the next step really because you know i want to encourage people to see it but it's having those opportunities isn't it for people to actually get there and, and, and see the film yes yeah, so the excellent opportunity that we have is that um, first of all, anyone can request that the film be screened in their local cinema. Um, at this point, that's in the UK and Australia, but it will extend to more countries soon. And if you go on the film's website, which is powermaryfilm.com, there's a host a screening section, and through part of that, you can put in your postcode, pick a date, request a screening at your local cinema, and promote it among your friends and colleagues. And all these screenings are based on 
minimum advanced ticket sales. So the key message is a screening can happen anywhere. And if people want to go, they need to buy tickets in advance to basically persuade the cinema that there is demand. So it's a fantastic opportunity to get the film shown in cinemas everywhere, but it needs to be driven by people who want to see it. That's quite a common model for independent films, and and we're lucky to have that opportunity. It's worked well in Australia, and we hope it's going to work well here. Outside of a cinema setting, um, we're strongly encouraging people to host screens of the film in in community organisations, in rugby league clubs, in schools, in universities, as part of events, and, and use it as a tool um, to support the work that they're doing and, and you can also request that through the website so um, I guess really it's a call out to people who listen who are listening to this if they'd like to see the film or if they've seen it and would like more people to see it um, we need your help on the ground here in the UK to make it happen yeah so they need to go to the website have a look and the, it's really clear on actually on the website I've had a look um, what's next for you obviously you're in the UK for um, a few more days I think and, and then off you know kind of elsewhere yes yeah, so I'm based in Sydney still and um back there in a few days time but I guess the next country we're releasing it in is almost certainly New Zealand Um, there's a lot of interest there the Kiwi Ferns the New Zealand women's team feature in the film and some of their players have seen a lot of build up on social media (laughs) and have been asking for months when is it coming out in New Zealand so the answer is um, very soon Um, but other Pacific countries as well there's been a huge amount of interest Um, Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, Vanuatu we're in discussions right now about holding launches there and in all those countries uh, women's sport is also picking up really fast and there are various sports not just rugby league who who want to get their athletes together to get get girls together get potential future athletes together to watch the film and also community organizations and charities who who want to to use it in the same way that we have been in png sort of to support the the bigger picture goals and discussions about about the opportunities for women in society excellent so I'll, obviously you know good luck with the, the next stage of, of- the, the, I guess the, the film's journey kind of around the world um, and I really appreciate you talking to me today so thank you Thank you very much Excellent stuff thank you to Joanna for giving her time up and thank you to Anna for carrying out the interview lots of really interesting insight from, from those guys there and uh, just to remind you powermerryfilm.com is where you can find out more information on the film and how to uh, arrange a viewing of the film in your local area. Uh, thanks for listening to everyone to this episode of SLP Shorts. You can find us at Super League Pod on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod, or you can send us an email if you've got anything interesting to tell us about, superleaguepod at gmail.com. You can get more SLP content on our blog at superleaguepod.com. You can find our shows and subscribe through Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, lots of ways to listen to the show. Um, And, uh, yeah, please do go out there on social media and and like and share and retweet our posts and and all of that. Also, if you could take the time to give us a rating or review on iTunes, if you listen through that, um, that method, then that would be really appreciated as well. Everything like that helps to spread the SLP family so we can bring you more stuff like this brilliant interview. Uh, We want to thank you all for listening. And until you hear from us again, keep enjoying and supporting the greatest game of all, Rugby League.